Okay, good morning guys. Today I'll be speaking about the difference between an underwater electrode and a topside electrode. As you can see, the topside electrode has absolutely no covering except for the flux coating. The underwater electrode, the Barracuda Gold, has a polymer acrylic resin coating to prevent water from entering to the flux. We will also be discussing the difference between an underwater electrode holder. As you can see, an underwater electrode holder is fully insulating, has an O-ring to seal on right in there and has a different electrode fitting system. The top side electrode holder is not fully insulating as you can see over there the cable moves freely inside there so the water can easily penetrate. Over there the water can get in and that will give you quite a nice shock. So easy to fit the top side electrode just as follows. Okay an underwater electrode holder has a swivel head. You'll see that there's like a parrot mouth on the inside as I turn it you'll see it opens as I turn it tight, you see it close. So you just fit the electrode underneath the parrot mouth, you give it a few twists, and voila, she's in. So will not be falling out anymore. But before you can start welding underwater, you need to remember one thing. Remove the tip. Okay, gentlemen, a point to remember. For underwater welding, we use double insulated HOFR cable. HOFR standing for heat, oil, and fire retardant. Top side, you only use a single insulated cable. The aluminium cable does not carry as much current as the copper current okay, cable. Okay, gentlemen, for underwater welding, you need to have a full SSDE system, surface applied diving equipment system, which includes your Kirby Morgan dive mask. On your dive mask, you need to have your welding visor with your welding lens inside. Yes, even for underwater welding, you also require a welding lens. One thing to remember, it is the UV light that from the welding arc that gives you arc eye. So, through this glass over here, you will not be able to get arc eye, but you will not be able to see the arc and what is happening in your welding pool. Okay, so we've spoken about that diving helmet required for underwater welding. Now, we get to our air supply. Our yellow umbilical over here is our airline. The blue is your pneumophathometer, which is your secondary airline. If something happens to your primary, always switch over to a secondary and we have our communications cable over here we have our comms box with this comms box we can speak through to the diver unfortunately there's no diver on the other side of the helmet at the moment but we will be following with a video of that shortly over here we have our dive spread also known as the dive panel as you can see over here this umbilical airline is coming from the outside where we have our compressor situated and over there you can open the valve and pressure will start building up on these four pressure gauges. Over here we have Diver 1 air out and Diver 2 air out. This is a depth gauge. If you make the new more hot, you will see this start rising as the pressure rises. And when you close this, you'll see it drops as the air pressure drops. The pressure that will stay inside the pipe is the same pressure that will be at that depth. Okay, over to the welding side of things. This is our baby, a Lincoln Electric Flex Tech 450. Okay, when this machine is switched on, you will see the voltage displayed across the arc, the amperage at which you are welding. This is where you set the amperage. You cannot set the voltage. The voltage is always changed by your OCV. It is a built-in mechanism into the welding machine. Okay, your voltage will be larger and or higher when your arc length is long, and it will be shorter or lower when your arc length is short. Over here you can set the arc control to crisp or soft, just gives you a little bit more voltage running through. Okay, as you can see these cables are being fed from the machine. The point to remember is for underwater welding you must always use negative polarity. Okay, the cables that pass through from our welding machine have to come through an isolation switch, also known as a knife switch in the industry, so that you can make it hot and make it cold. Hot referring to the current is being on, and cold is the current being off, isolated from the diver. Okay, from the knife switch you run into double insulated cables. Remember it's the HOFR double insulated cable, 50 millimeter square. From there we run to the stinger. The stinger goes into the water. As it is fully insulated, you will not receive a shock. Over here we have the earth clamp. Always try and make it an easy fitting and easy removal. Remember underwater, manual dexterity gets influenced quite a lot by the coldness of the water thickness of your gloves and the movement of the water.